Good morning, everybody. Today is August 12th. Here's your quick COVID update. I'm Dr. Duckwell, and the numbers are not good. Uh, yesterday, we had 155,000 cases in the United States. The day before that, 162, 163,000 cases. So we are above that 150,000 average range. The day before that was 176,000 or something like that. So our numbers are going to go track up and up and up and up. And, um, you know, with tomorrow's data and then you know Saturday's report, we we should be hanging up around uh, around 150,000 range. I said we would um, hit 200,000 cases. I think we will surpass it. Florida is ablaze. Um, my home city of Houston has has the most cases it's ever had, um, and um, its a county judge um, is suing the the governor to um, allow school mask mandates in Houston. Dallas has already won their lawsuit. San Antonio has also won their lawsuit. So um, I think there is a very, very, very good t um, chance that there will be masks in school, depending on where you're going. And um, But the numbers are not looking good. And I want you to remember this. This Delta variant is very different than wild type. Um, so wild type is what we call the original virus. So that would be, that would be SARS-CoV-2, the, you know, Wuhan lab, you know, whatever you want to call it, the China virus. I don't care what you call it. We call it the wild type. So, and from the wild type, we've had four variants of concern. That's the highest level of concern, right? So the alpha variant, which was the UK variant, then South African Brazilian variant, and um, the Delta variant is actually the one from India. That's at India on fire. We have the Lambda variant, which came from Peru, which is here in the United States. There's a Colombian variant, but right now the Delta variant is the one of concern. Now, if you think about it, it is um, much more transmissible than the UK variant. And it is orders of magnitude much more transmissible than the wild type variant. So if the wild type could pass, you know, when when this whole thing started, the wild type variant, we thought that maybe one infected person could infect three to four other people. This Delta variant, an infected person could infect eight to nine people. And um, the wild type variant had a seven day replication period incubation period. And that's was some of the concern, which was that, you know, people could walk around for a week shedding fire virus, being asymptomatic, and then, you know, spreading it to people and uh, without, without knowing it. Um, but now with this Delta variant, that, that incubation period has dropped from seven days down to four days. And um, that's making it much more transmissible and, and includes a higher viral load inside your oral pharynx. So, so you're even, you're coughing out, spewing out, laughing out, singing out larger, larger uh, amounts of virus, uh, which has replicated faster uh, than wild type. So that's why it's much more contagious. Now, uh, unlike a year ago, when our most vulnerable were the elderly, people over 60, 65, and in my case, um, the morbidly obese, that's you know my following since I was a bariatric surgeon. And um, what we've seen now is that you know the elderly have been vaccinated, 90% of them have had their first dose or have had COVID or have passed away, unfortunately, from COVID. So now what we're seeing is younger and younger people in their 40s and 30s and now in their 20s that are in the hospital that are very, very sick. And we are starting to also see complicated cases within a pediatric population, young kids. So this idea, you, listen to me real quick. This is very important. Last year, you have to stop thinking, believing everything you knew from last year it does not apply. Kids survive. This doesn't affect kids. Kids get over it really quickly. No, that was the wild type virus. This is very different. The Delta variant is not, you, you need to think of it as a whole different virus, okay? What we're seeing is the ages are getting younger and younger. You are having mass surges in, in the 12 to, to 18 year old, the teenagers, right? We're having much more cases. We're having ICU admissions. You're having check, the children's hospitals are packed. Um, ICU beds are running out for kids and 
remember, listen to me, you're having for whatever reason, a surge in RSV in kids, which is kids get RSV, which makes them very sick. It's a respiratory illness. My, my, my 15 year old had it when she was um, two, was hospitalized for a couple of days on oxygen, gave her asthma, lingering asthma that she's just now starting to kind of get, get over at, at 15. So what we're seeing is, and I don't know the reason why, but we're starting to see cases of RSV plus COVID in like six, seven, eight year old kids, you know, five, six, seven, eight year old kids. So a double whammy. This is another fucking reason to institute masks in elementary schools and, and the kids that cannot be vaccinated. Guys, I have a five year old. This is my chief primary concern. This is why we are all vaccinated. This is why you don't come over unless you're vaccinated. This is, and Dr. V doesn't guarantee that you don't pass. I know, but you put the odds in your favor, guys. Put it, you have seat belts and airbags. You get vaccinated and you wear masks. You, if you can't get vaccinated, you gotta wear masks. You wear masks and you social distance. And when you're not at school, you know, um, don't let anyone come over who's not vaccinated until we get over this Delta surge. Uh, and yes, there might be another variant, but the sooner we can get this shit under control, the better it's gonna be. Now, listen, I am very, very concerned. We are at 150,000 cases. This is August. Go back and look. Last year in August, we were on the decline. Cases were going down and we were heading into the fall surge and everybody remembers the fall surge. This year, we are heading up at the same rate as the fall surge from last year and we haven't even hit hit the fall season. Oh, but Dr. V, you know, look at UK. It like it miraculously went away. No, it's not. UK is around 27, 28,000 cases a day. Let's say we drop, we hit 200,000 like I predict and we drop down to, I don't know, 100,000. You're, you're talking about heading into the fall surge with 100,000 cases as your average instead of where we were last year, around 20,000 cases? Come on. And then we're gonna go into Thanksgiving and people are gonna be stupid and airlines are gonna, I don't know why you're, you know, it makes no sense to have flights, to have sporting events, to have whatever. When we know that these vaccinations, it's getting worse and worse, the data is coming in the the vaccinations still offer very good protection, but it's not as good against uh, Delta as it is against wild type. That makes sense. That is science. See, but stupid people sit there and go, see, I told you, what's the point of getting vaccinated? Like, because it still gives you a 90, 93, 94% chance. 95% chance of staying your ass out of a hospital. 99.5% chance of not dying. That's why. It's so dumb. And yes, as the data comes in, this could get worse. And the only way we get through this is start doing what we need to do. Quit politicizing vaccines, quit politicizing elementary schools, quit going to like, like, like uh, debates and, and arguing with people and screaming at people about why, why wearing a mask is robbing of you of your individual freedoms. It's idiot, idiocy, man, idiocy. Anyway, numbers are not good. Let me, real quickly, let me talk about booster shots. Today, it's expected that the FDA is going to approve uh, a third booster shot for immunocompromised. These are people that um, are on immunosuppressant drugs for like cancer, for like transplant. Um, a, a study came out a few months ago that showed that um, immunosuppressed people, particularly transplant patients, did not have a response to, to the vaccinations. And um, this drove me nuts because I've been saying for months they need to, you need to test antibodies, which, you know, I have those COVID rapid tests that test for antibodies. They're not qualitative. They're not quantitative. They're just qualitative. Did you have a response or did you not? Right. So now we have all this data that suggests that a bunch of these people, um, these transplant patients don't have a response. So so you have to do another study that gives them a third booster dose Well, the third dose shows that that now they seem to have a response after the third dose. So it's expected that we're going to have uh, approval for a third dose for um, immunocompromised and transplant people. Now, Dr. V, are you going to get a booster? Should I get a booster? Not really. Not right now. I mean, I tested myself for antibodies. I, I, there's that video on YouTube if you want to follow check it out. But like, I had a response to uh, my, my Moderna vaccine. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm 48. I don't have any comorbidities. I have a little <laughs> Buddha belly. <laughs> Everybody does from COVID, you know, but I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have diabetes. I don't have any comorbidities. And so for right now, I don't need a booster shot. Now there might be in the future, some crazy ass variant that, you know, makes this first iteration of the vac vaccination um, non-ideal, in which case I would get a booster shot. And a lot also depends on what's happened with kids. I mean, can my five-year-old, maybe six-year-old by that point, can she get a vaccination, you know? Um, and I will tell you when, when they approve vaccines for five-year-old and up, my, my kid is going to get hers. I mean, there's just, you know, what we need to do as parents. Okay. Um, love you guys very much. Stay safe, mask up, social distance, you know, go back to it all. I'm, you know, N95. I'll see you tomorrow for another update. Bye guys.